Hello and welcome to another out of spec reviews video. You join me at the 2023 Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance. Today is the big show day and uh, we've already had a blast here. Just the other day we were driving around a Volkswagen ID Buzz, a Euro spec one here in Florida. But I wanted to take you all on a tour of the concourse on the big day to show you sort of this dichotomy. There's uh, you know, pre-war classics, there's modern classics, and then there's, of course, this new trend towards electrification, which we cover a lot on this channel. But what I think is really interesting is a lot of automakers, enthusiasts are bringing their electric cars here to showcase the future in an event that's designed to celebrate the past. And it's really one of my favorite events of the year because of the focus on electrification in the context of automotive over the last 100, 150 years. It's pretty incredible. And what I wanna do is in this video, take you on a tour of all the electric cars on display. So we can kind of see what automakers are showing, some new stuff as well that's gonna be unveiled that I'm looking forward to showing you. And um, maybe we'll throw in a few spicy classics in here as well. But welcome to the 2023 Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance. Let's go on a full tour of all of the electric cars. <laughs> So 2023 Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance. This has been an event that I've loved to come to over the years. Uh, and mostly for that, you know, electric enthusiasm that's starting to be bred into truly the hardest core car enthusiast. So let me show you everything on display from an electric standpoint. Of course, we have a whole class of T1 transporters to basically celebrate the ID Buzz, which is right over here. Volkswagen's getting back into the van space and uh, just amazing to see the uh, ID Buzz here. But of course, ID4 on display, this one in red. It's a Pro S non plus version Chattanooga car. Every ID4 that's here is a 2023 Chattanooga built uh, version, of course, fantastic car. We've enjoyed them over time. And the upgrades to the Chattanooga ID4 is really nice. Still needs some software improvements and little things like that. I also heard that the Chattanooga cars, this is just a rumor, maybe some of our audience will know, some are putting in the SK batteries, some are getting the older LG batteries that charge at only 130, 135 kilowatts. You really wanna find one with the SK battery that does 191 kilowatt peak is the highest we've seen and they charge really great. The ID Buzz, this is the same exact one that we drove around the other day, really couldn't crash it because they only had one to show. So I'm glad we didn't damage it in any way during our time with it. And just an awesome experience to drive this around Florida. It was so nice to see everyone's reactions out there. Truly, truly fun. I actually just made a video on my personal channel, the Kyle Connor YouTube channel of this 21 window transporter over here. This is a, uh, what was it, 1967 Anna, right? Is I think what they were going with, yep. And uh, just a cool driving experience, drove great around and uh, that's on that channel. Another ID4, this one with the light interior, which looks pretty nice. If you take a look in here actually, you'll notice it's light but it doesn't have the uh, blue accents everywhere. It's got the old style white with black dash, and maybe that's user optionable, but I thought the light seats only came with the, oh no, I'm sorry, it does have the blue. I don't know, maybe it's the way the lighting looked, it didn't look blue. So nope, that's the normal light interior for 2023. Yep, looking pretty nice. All right, so they have 10 Volkswagen transporters here, all Sambas, some Sambas. They got a whole bunch of other uh, little things going on here. I mean, this is Jer uh, Jerry Garcia's, yeah, this is Jerry Garcia's bus, which we, uh, of course, had to get into a video. And um, maybe in just a few months, you maybe see us driving some electric versions of these classic ones. And uh, that'll be coming up soon, but let's continue onwards. We got more T1s, of course, Volkswagens at the van class and uh, great to see them all on display here. So in terms of the rest of the electric cars that are at the event, again, most of these are combustion over here. You can see there's very few electric, uh, <laughs> really anything. You can see here, we have your typical air-cooled 911s. You have other racing cars. There's some Le Mans winners out in the distance. There's some older pre-war stuff scattered around as well. But I'm looking ahead and I'm seeing the Porsche booth just over here curious to see if they have a Taycan on display and uh, let's go over and see what Porsche is showing everyone. You join us over at the Porsche booth now starting off amazing Carrera RS 2.7 here on the left another Carrera 
2.7 here and uh, take a look. This is the display. I'm seeing a Tycon over here, so we definitely want to go check out the spec on that one. Um, but here we have a 356 on the left, absolutely gorgeous. You have one of my new favorites, again, not electric, but the new Porsche 911 Dakar. Uh, just an incredible car, lift kit, chunky tires. You get uh, an LED strip in the roof rack that actually plugs in by the satellite antenna, and it's just super cool. Ultimate Colorado daily driver. But this is what we came here to see, a frozen blue Porsche Taycan, and this one in 4S trim. It's got the newer wheels on it with uh, some refreshed wheel designs over the years. They got the calipers painted black, which is not typical for a 4S, but it is an option. Usually the, the S models will have a red caliper. And uh, you can always tell it's a US spec version from having the orange indicator right here. A lot of owners swap that out with the clear uh, side marker lights, which you can um, you know, just find online, I guess. Looks like it's option, optioned with adaptive cruise control because you can see the little radar down there. No night vision on this particular car. No head up display. Just seems like a nicely optioned uh, 4S. Porsche is really here showing off paint to sample as an option. So you can see this is option code K5J in frozen blue. That's actually a factory color available for Taycan, but you can, of course, spec whatever color you want with their paint to sample pretty much. And um, yeah, NATO olive green metallic is my choice in the Taycan. So um, yeah, let's go and see what else we got. If we look over here on the left, you'll see Rolls-Royce motor cars. I love that they put motor cars on there because of course they have their aviation division and even some other projects. Um, they have a Ghost and a Cullinan on display. No Spectre. I was really hoping we would see the new Rolls-Royce electric two-door Spectre. Uh, they had a little design briefing uh, that uh, we checked out. So pretty neat to see some of the stuff that they're doing. For me, I really wish the Spectre was a four-door, but how much can you complain? It's going to be the ultra luxurious Rolls-Royce. We see them out testing. We're being tagged in spy photos the whole time and uh, great to see what Rolls-Royce is doing. You can see here, how cool would it be if the Cullinan was electric and you could have this little camping thing out the back. Also, Rivian, take note, because that is pretty sweet to have the chairs on the tailgate. So continuing on, I'm looking at a hill of about six Porsche 959s over there, not electric, shouldn't be, incredible car, but I'm actually even more amazed to tell you that that's not every 959 that's on display at this event. There's also another green one from Road Scholars. That's my dream right there. <laughs> I only want one 959, but there's, oh no, there's seven. The green one from Road Scholars is over there. We have to go just put that in the video because that is probably my ultimate dream car or at least up there so let's go check take a look at the 959s and then we'll get back to the electric stuff guys just take a look at this one two three four five six seven nine five nines everyone's quiet soaking it in just incredible i gotta come over this is my favorite one this one right here in this spec i've never seen a 959 in this specification before all-wheel drive, of course, built for rally homologation, turbocharged, flat six engine, one of the first adjustable suspensions on a road going car. Just an amazing piece of engineering. Three white ones over here, a red one, lots of Euro specs, and uh, just, just incredible. Okay. Let's get back to more electric stuff over that away. We're making our way over towards the General Motors Everybody In booth. I'm listening to a Mura at idle right now, which is just amazing. But I wanted to show you this. This is insane. Um, and I think it's something everybody can appreciate. This was Amelia Earhart's last car she purchased before she went missing. Just a few months before that final flight, this is what it is. It's a 1937 Cord 812 Phaeton. And uh, really is just an amazing machine. It was her personal car. It's been restored. And uh, it's now entered into a national archive. And we're really uh, pretty amazing to see it on display. I guess she was famous for owning some other cars as well, but this one didn't get as much attention, but this was the last car she ever ordered. The headlights are straight out of a parts catalog from something aviation related. Forgive me for not being a total, uh, totally up to speed on it, but what an amazing thing. License plate, Amelia Earhart Cord. Love that. So let's continue onwards over towards GM where they have a huge electric display. And um, man, just looking at Lamborghini corner here is pretty, <laughs> Pretty incredible to see, really nice new Ford GT, 
I wish you guys liked combustion cars more because it'd be fun to show you all of this, but I know everyone's very EV focused and that's why we're getting to the EVs. We're on our way actually over to BMW. I'm taking a look at a really nice M2, although I believe that's under the Griot's garage badge. I'm looking at a three liter CSL, one of my favorite all time BMWs, a full racing spec as well in that particular one. Uh, and we're looking to see if we can see iX, i7, or i4, all three of which are fantastic electric cars that I've recommended many times. In fact, I put iX and i7 both on my top 10 EVs I recommend to buy this year. Um, and they just unveiled their new uh, X5 and X6 LCI lifecycle impulse. It's essentially the refresh. X5 plug-in hybrid now gets a ton of range, like 40, 50, 60 miles of range electric, which is pretty good uh, for a plug-in hybrid. We've made some videos with the previous version of the X5 45E, really love that spec. But I'm not actually seeing, oh, I am seeing an i7. Let's go take a look. And it looks to be a similar spec to what we just reviewed in California. Uh, last week when we did uh, you know all the luxurious features and we took it on a little bit of a road trip around California. You can see here the refreshed X5M on the left. The center one is just the regular X5. This one might be the plug-in hybrid version. Let's take a look. It is, yes. So you can always tell it's the plug-in hybrid X5 by the little charge port flap that Nick Miles is standing right next to over here. And uh, they're about to film some things. Unbelievable BMW 507. This is the last 507 ever off the line. One of my all-time dream cars. Just an amazing thing. Actually, a family friend of ours is, is great friends with the owner of this car. So it was really great to meet him and hear the stories of that particular one. The new X6M, not electric. And then you have the i7 right over here which um, is the identical specification to what we just drove, the i760. It has the wool interior on this particular one. Um, really is, it's locked unfortunately, but it's uh, identical to the one we just had, the executive rear seats, the theater display, and I think it is the spec to have an i7 in. If I was to get one, which I'm not, but I really wish I had a need for it, I would get it in this exact specification. And I think getting it without the M Sport bumper on this particular one looks a little bit nicer. If you get an M Sport version, you get a nicer steering wheel, but then you get a whole bunch of black on the front of it, which only looks good if you paint the car in black, if you get a black paint color. Something about this luxury line, really nice. Just to me, it's, it's really grown on me. At first I was like, wow, that's stupid ugly. Now I'm like, okay, it's really not that bad. And the way the car drives, it's unlike anything else out there, truly unbelievable one tiny step down from a rolls royce and maybe even matching a ghost pretty incredible so the i7 is here no ix no i4 on display this is really the amelia vehicle to have though the top luxury stuff as you see a private jet taking off over us right there <laughs> it's actually a prop plane but the things you see here are just amazing well, you join us now over at the GM booth. GM really pushing electrification here, but also some combustion stuff. You can see a C5R, one of my all-time favorites, a racing Corvette right here. Just an incredibly accomplished car. And you can see just even more celebration of Corvette. But when you come up to the GM booth, you'll see Hummer EV, Lyric, Celestique. So let's go take a look at these up close, see what's on display. Um, this week, actually, GM has been running a, a sort of test ride program. I don't think they were letting people drive the cars, but it was the first time that we've seen the non edition one Hummer EVs out in public, actually. So they were fully blacked out. Um, it actually looked pretty good. One of them had the accessory big wheels on it as well. This is very similar as I crash into a post. This is very similar to the Hummer EV that we tested and reviewed. Uh, did a whole bunch of off-road tests, on-road tests, charging tests, 361 kilowatt, 365 kilowatt peak charging speeds on this. You know, all the big numbers. If you want a number, weight, width, height, charging power, acceleration, it's all big numbers. Acceleration, low number though. Very quick, like three seconds to 60 on something like this. It's wild. Um, actually, I know a lot of people love to hate the Hummer EV. I love the Hummer EV. I just think I love the excess. I'm glad they're not building that many of them. It's really a showcase of electrification, but what a fun way to do it. And now we get to a car for the first time on video. I'm happy to present to you the Cadillac Lyric, which uh, I have not actually played around with, not on YouTube, at least not in person. And uh, it's a car that I've been really trying to get Cadillac to say, hey, we, we need to test this thing. Send one to Colorado or we'll go anywhere. One just popped up on Turo in Florida. So I was even thinking about going to rent that particular one. But let's take a look. Come on over here. First time taking a look at the Lyric. I believe if I click this little button, the charge port comes down. Um, that was probably the least premium charge port motion I've ever seen. But uh, 
let's take a look here. You can see it folds down and kind of wobbles CCS connection. I'm not sure really of the specs on it at the moment. I'm going to have a quick seat in it for the first time if they let me it's a little bit of a mach -E situation where you pull the door open right here you push here under sixty thousand dollars starting price the launch version will be rear wheel drive i think 300 miles of range wow materials are looking good this is the door handle release um okay let me just have a quick seat in the lyric wow seats are nice steering wheel is nice super cruise bar right here shifter oh this is probably i drive or their software controller right here looks pretty good. Cup holders with plastic knurling. So like a lot of things look premium, but they're not really feeling that premium. But in terms of the specs on it, I don't know how you can ignore it. Sunroof up here, huge glass roof in this particular vehicle, but the tinting is not very strong. So I, it's good they still include a shade because I think you're gonna need it. Heated and cooled seats, just taking a look here. AKG reference quality sound system. Have a, have a look just here in the driver's seat. You can see some really cool things going on. Yeah, nice looking car. Let me try the back seat really quick. Again, first time that I've ever been able to show a Lyric to you on this channel. So if you take a look back here, you'll see I'm now in the rear seat. Um, plenty of headroom. If I kind of lean forwards, so if I lean back, I can feel just my head touching the roof. But if I sit normally, we're all good. This is not a full Lyric review, but genuinely the first time I'm being able to experience it. And my first takeaway, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Everything feels plasticky. I kind of expected more. I really want to touch it to see what it feels like, but yeah. you're right, it does look premium yeah. just by looking at it. Yeah, the, the visually it's very premium. I yeah. love the design details. It's way nicer in person than in photos, actually, I think. Um, the leather quality doesn't feel that great. I don't know. I think if you approach it as a $58,000 car that's competing with Model Y, definitely there. And that's what it is. I think visually it just almost seems a bit more premium by the styling. So maybe I was expecting too much. I don't know. But nice to get an initial viewpoint before I do our full reviews, which of course will be coming at some point in the near future. Will it have soft closed doors? Let's try it. So I'm going to just... I like the door handle push situation. I'm just going to latch it. No soft close, but the door handle push works really well. I actually really like the door handles where you can just push them. The door pops out a little bit and then you can open this way. Let's take a look at the trunk space. Big slope going on down here. Not great for the dogs necessarily. Oh, I remember how to open the trunk. You push the Cadillac thing. And so that is how it goes. There's a center brake light, the Chimsels, the pretty cool like F1 style thing up above. Let's take a look. Here, deep underfloor storage, that's nice. Take a look at how that cargo divider goes sideways in here. And it's designed to go in, you know, in place of this. And you can see rear seats can be folded down here. We'll do all of that when we do our full reviews, of course, coming in the future. But I want to show you this, uh, this rear brake light. It's badged as the 450E. I can never figure out Cadillac's badging scheme, but I'm pretty sure it's Newton meters of torque, I think. <laughs> this is the center high mounted uh, brake light up here, which is pretty interesting. No rear wiper. Is that true? I think it's true, guys. Right. But it, in practice, it never really does work that well. So, but yes, no rear brake light. Right. But the one thing GM gives you is that digital rear view mirror. So you can always see out the back there. Now, this is pretty incredible. This is the Cadillac Celestique. It's the you know, many hundred thousand dollar showcase product of what maybe electric's capable, what Ultium is capable of. Looks unbelievable. It's on Pilot Sport EV tires here. Unbelievably long car, huge taillights that really come down the entire side. It's like you're telling people approaching you sideways that you're braking, but somehow standing behind it, you can still see this brake light from this wide haunch. So really impressive there actually. This is how you open the trunk in the Celestique. Take a look at that in there. That is pretty incredible. And of course, we'll be mindful not to touch it, but just a really nice trunk space looking item in here. We'll peek into the interior very quickly. So if you come on over here, they have this blue on blue specification. You can see bucket rear seats with a center armrest down the middle. Um, is this a car that's really that relevant? Well, I would say in a sense, yes. Every brand I think needs a halo car. I love seeing halo cars out there for Tesla. It's the upcoming Roadster, assuming that makes it to production anytime soon. 
uh, or maybe even the Cybertruck in their case. For Polestar, it's going to be the Polestar Roadster. For Cadillac, it's going to be this. And this Celestique is just an incredible looking car. I think it looks amazing. Just so cool. I'm pretty sure they're all sold out or close to being sold out. And so that is uh, what an experience it was to see that. I've emailed Cadillac to ask if we can film both of these cars, but I think it might be too busy to kind of block some people off. Otherwise, I'd love to take you on full tours of them. So over here, we have the Buick Wildcat concept or Wildcat EV. This is not a full production car. Of course, it's a, a design intent project or at least setting the tone for what Buicks might look like into the future. So I think this is a really neat thing. If you could come join me on the side over here, Anna, you can take a look down the side of the Wildcat EV here. And so you can see just really nice interior looking design. Pretty cool. It looks like they're going with a digital mirror into the future, which Buick is very popular in China, of course. So you'll be able to have some digital functions with a screen on the inside. Take a look at the seats. It's no secret. I'm pretty uh, against electric cars in general. Let's take a look at the back of this thing. What did I just say? I'm against electric cars. I'm against concept cars in general. I love electric cars. And um, so I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time on this particular one, but you can see they have some interesting design tires, pretty cool designs down the back, very Celestique vibes looking into the back here. But um, I'm not a huge concept car lover. The Celestique and the Lyric and the Hummer EV are all at least production or production intent equivalents. And then if we look over here, this is something I'm excited to drive, but I think GM should have done more in my opinion. This is the Corvette E-Ray. So we are already familiar with the C8. I've driven a few of them. I've made videos with them on different channels over the years now. And now they've put in a hybrid battery. So it's like 1.2 kilowatt hour or so. It's meant for a performance boost. You can do a quiet start and low speed driving fully electric, but no plug. Really think they could have done bigger battery, plug-in hybrid, more electric performance, but it is pretty incredible that with such a small battery, they have such big power output uh, on the front axle here. So rear is V8 combustion, dual clutch transmission, front end is an electric motor. I kind of think they could have done more if they're doing this on the everybody in electric showcase booth and this doesn't even have a plug on it, but okay. It's still pretty cool to see a Corvette with some electrification. The fans went crazy there uh, when, when this happened. You know, half the people love it, half the people hate it. I really would love to see them do a fully electric sports car. Uh, so that'll be neat to see. Well, I think that pretty much does it for the GM booth. Let's uh, let's continue on and see what else we can find. Yes, this is my review of the Lyric, which is a car that I'm actually pretty interested in. Um, deciding whether I want a Model 3 or some other sort of electric vehicle, but this one definitely does catch my eye. I love how it looks. The front, the back, both fantastic. I really want to see the interior um, and feel what you were saying sounded a bit cheap. I actually really, really like the white seats. I don't know if that's leather or some sort of fake leather. Well, it looks like it's busy, so let's get going looking at the other electric vehicles. Well, we're now at the front lawn where their cars are coming up. This is where they're gonna award all of the awards in a little bit. And uh, they actually just did a little electric uh, corral where all the electric cars just drove through. It was great to see, but take a look at this. And I think this is actually one of the last, we're gonna do a little bit more searching, but I think this might be the last electric car here. And holy smokes, what a freaking winner we have to show you here. So let's just, Wait a second, we'll work our way through the uh, traffic and I'll take you and show you the Polestar Roadster. So let's run up this way. You can see we're just behind the Volkswagen booth. You can see ID Buzz, ID4s over here, the 21 window that we drove. And this here is the Polestar Roadster concept. Now we all know how I feel about concept cars. I'm gonna let this one slide though, cause it's just so cool. <laughs> and, it's, and it's pretty much production intent. I don't think there's much that would need to be changed to make it you know, fully production, but just look how incredible this thing is. The interior is unbelievable. Actually, if you just take a, a quick glance up on the inside, you can maybe hold the camera so you can look up on the inside there. It's got, of course, the Polestar gold seat belt. All good to see. It's gonna be an 800 volt system architecture, which is really great. And uh, I believe they have an option for a drone to come out, at least in the, the pre-production model. Hey there but it's just also you know looking pretty incredible um 2026 or so i think it's 20 grand to reserve one 
I don't know, what do you guys think? Should we get one of these when it comes out? It's not gonna be cheap. But, um, you know, certainly in terms of tech specs and, and all that stuff, not really pushing the boundaries here. Um, but especially when it comes out as well, it won't be. But the cool thing is the design, the image, the feel. And I think that's where the money is going to this. It's just gonna be a special experience. And I think as electric cars become more common, maybe we can start looking away from the tech specs and focus more on driving experience, um, which is what I love about cars. So this is very high on the wish list if it turns out looking close to this. Let me show you the front of it, come around here, because it's just an incredible design. If you look at this, and I really like how their display slopes up so you can get a really good view of this really nice headlight unit. The lines, everything is so sharp it's so you know sort of carved of one if you will and then of course you can see sensors that'll be down here as well for driver assistance stuff which is not unlike anything we'll see from Polestar 3. Um, so if you're curious of course we have reviews on production Polestars 1 and 2. We have a review of the upcoming Polestar 3 already live on this channel so you can search for those find them and now I've been able to show you this. The only one I haven't filmed I think is the Precept con uh, concept Maybe I've included it in some auto show tours similar to what we're doing here. So let's go and see if we can find any last electric cars, but I'm pretty sure that's kind of it. And then we'll end the video. And there is one last electric situation going on here. There is the Apex Addix or Addix Apex. I think it's the Addix Apex. And they also have their little cyber bike situation going on here. Um, pretty weird booth, definitely a different vibe than the rest of the event. But um, I don't know, they say it's going to be an electric hypercar, French company, I believe. Um, yeah, it would be cool to show it to you, but I need to get this video on YouTube, and it was supposed to be unveiled a half hour ago, and I just don't want to wait everywhere. So that's the Cleftron is the name of that electric bike, and this is going to be called the Apex. But uh, pretty cool stuff. Love to see more electric uh, enthusiasm here at uh, Concourse d'Elegance. And there you guys have it. That was a tour of every electric car we could find here at Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance. Just an amazing experience. Occasionally there's some really old classic electrics around, but I hadn't actually seen any, you know, stuff before even combustion cars were a thing. And uh, well, I'm leaving you now with the 959s over the hill, which is a, just an incredible experience. For all of you guys who can appreciate electric and classic combustion vehicles, what uh, an event this is. One of my favorites every year. I love coming here. We got to see the Buzz, got to drive the Buzz, which was great. Drove some classic BMWs as well. That'll be on my personal channel. And uh, all in all, just a really fun time. So thanks for tuning into this little impromptu tour of every EV we could find here at Amelia Island. See you on another one soon. Bye-bye.